Welcome back. I'm still working on the Scottsdale painting. I am working on these African daisies here. I showed you a picture of my reference material. There are some African daisies that were in our garden. There's a little shot there. And so anyway, that's what we're going to be painting here in this blue ceramic pot. Oh, let me figure out what brush I'm going to use here. Several of you have said, have mentioned that some of my videos did not have sound. Before June 7th, 2017, none of my videos had uh, voiceover, any description or talking at all. And I finally got up the courage, June 7th, 2017, to make my first talking video. So if any of you look at them, any of them before then, they're not going to have sound. I don't have time. I, some of you have suggested, well, I could go back and add voiceover. I don't have the time to do that. So if you get in some of those, just go to the ones after June 7th, 2017. Anyway, let's work on these African daisies. I am using several mixtures. This is a Lizarin Crimson plus white, and I block my flowers in first. This is alizarin crimson plus white plus a little bit of cadmium red, or uh, cadmium red light, I'll say it in a minute. And I just block in my basic shapes of the flowers. You've probably noticed by now this is a sequence that I follow on a regular basis. Most flowers I paint. I block in flowers first, leaves last. That's because I want my flower color to remain nice and crisp and clean. If I were to paint the green first and then come back and try to paint the flowers, I would, my brush would pick up that green and muddy my flower color. So that is why I do most of my flowers in this sequence. There are some flowers I don't do that way. Uh, irises daylilies because the flowers are up above the foliage so I can paint the foliage first and then and then do my flowers but most flowers clump with the foliage and so that's why I do the flowers first leaves last knocking my brushes off my palette here this is cadmium orange I mix my cadmium orange. I've had troubles uh, when I use Winton oil colors. They're made by Winsor Newton and they're a great paint, but I've not been able to get cadmium orange lately. They do make a cadmium orange hue, which I would not recommend using because when you try to lighten it with adding white, it turns pink. I don't know why what the deal is, but so I make my own cadmium orange. I mix one part of cadmium red light and two parts of cadmium yellow medium, and it makes a beautiful cadmium orange. Now this is this is a little cadmium orange plus alizarin crimson. And you can see I block in several different shades here. I want the colors, I don't want the colors all to be the same. If you look at flowers they are not all the same hue, the same value, they're different darkness, lightness, they're different shades of color. So I don't, I use lots of different colors. I'm making a mixture right now of, it's a little bit darker with my Elizabeth Crimson plus white. Just want a little bit of darker shade in there, still not dark enough. I put my reference material, I have a laptop just sitting on the, my tabaret to the right side of my easel and I can look at my, my reference material while I paint. There we go, that's darker. I'm going to let a flower kind of pop down here. I'm going to add a little bit of just lighter color here. 
the sunlight's catching it. Now I'm going to come back in and start putting in my leaves. Now the leaves are mixtures of phthalo blue plus a little cabinet of orange plus white. This is some of the same mixtures, mixtures I used in the background, but they had more blue in them. These have more orange. Now see how my brush picked up, I think you can see this, see how my brush picked up that red? That's the reason that I don't do the greens first, because if I were doing the, had, had done the green first and then were trying to paint the flowers, my brush would, you could see how my, your brush picks that color up. I like these square, bright brushes because I can use the corner to make little brush strokes or I can use the flat edge to make broader brush strokes. I used to work with filberts and once I discovered these, the filberts kind of fell by the wayside. And again, with the greens and the foliage, I, I do the same thing. I mix lots of different shades and then give a lot of variation within that foliage. Now this is a mixture of phthalo blue plus liquid, and that just gives me a cool dark for within the, in the depths of the leaves. Enlarge my reference there. Boy, we, uh, one spring we were, had stopped at the nursery and oh my gosh, I saw these African daisies and Jack and I were going to dinner at IHOP and we were meeting someone there and so we couldn't stay very long at the nursery so Jack said, come on, we'll come back. And so we came back and got a bunch of those African daisies. And they were just really, really pretty. I would, uh, as Jack said, I never saw a nursery that I didn't love. And they're dangerous for me because I end up going in and just going wild. But since I paint flowers, it's, he said, you gotta have, gotta have models. He was always so sweet. All that stuff. Very supportive. And that's something that, as an artist, a lot of, you know, we've run into artists over the years who just kind of like to hoard their ideas, like people are going to steal things from them. But we all paint differently. We can all look at the same thing and our artwork comes out looking different. So we really need to just help each other, do our best to share our ideas and techniques. And this is one of the reasons that I do my blog. Several people have helped Jack and I over the years, and there's nothing we can do to pay those people back. And they spent a lot of time and effort helping us learn, and so our goal is to pass it forward. I once asked Jack, you know, if, if there was one word that he could use to describe himself, what would it be? And he thought a second, and then he just said, generous. Think about that. Of all the words in the English language, the one word, generous. And that's so true. I can't tell you the number of people after Jack died, the number of artists all over the world that contacted me, sent me emails, just wonderful. And artists that I had never even known Jack was helping. And they said, oh my gosh, you know, Jack was wonderful. He sent me a copy of his book and didn't even ask, he, I wanted to pay him, and he said, oh, no, 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 no. This, you just take this, use it, and share what you learn. And that's the one thing that, that I ask, is share what you learn. If 
you have artist friends and share my blog, share my videos. Let's let's help everybody. Let's help each other. Anyway, now I'm going to start adding some highlights on these flowers. And I have to be very careful now. I, I just gently lay the paint on top of the greens because if I if I dig in very far with my brush, it's going to pull that green up and muddy my color. So I have to just, this is, takes a very light touch. It takes a while to develop this. But it's, it just, you can lay heavier paint on top of the greens. And see how my brush picked up that green? So I have to clean my brush. I am constantly wiping my brush. to add a little white into this cadmium orange because I need these, these petals to stand out against that red door. So I've added a little bit of orange. And I'm exaggerating the color on these. And actually, the ones that I showed you are, are, I picked a whole grouping of that deeper, rusty color, rusty red orange, but there were also some that were this lighter color. So, but that's the wonderful thing about painting. We can make the world as we want it to be, not as it actually is. So, if we want to make flowers different colors a little bit, then you know, that's up to us. You're the artist. It's your canvas. You you paint your painting. I think that's just one of the joys of, of painting. You can see I just I keep cleaning my brush. I used to go through a lot of tissue paper. Our store has tissue paper. I buy tissue paper in bundles of, I think there's 72 rolls in a bundle. And uh, when they have it on sale, boy, I stock up. I've told this story before, but it's worth telling again. When Jack and I would do that, we'd be at the grocery store checking out. and We'd be loading the stuff off the grocery cart, and he'd turn around and say, Hey, Mickey, did you get the kale pectate? I mean, it was a mess. And uh, people around us would look and kind of say, ooh. <laughs> but that was Jack. Life with Jack was a lot of fun. Anyhow, let me do the centers here. I'm just going to do... This is a mix of my mud plus liquid. And I'm just going to do a few to show you how this does. It's done in three steps. I do the dark center. And as the flowers round over, the centers are in perspective. because the plants are round. So those blossoms in the front, we see more of a round. These are, there we go. Okay, now I take some cadmium yellow medium. Make a center within that. And I'm, again, I'm just laying the paint on there. As you can see, I pick up that dark on the brush, so I have to keep wiping my brush out. Oops, picked up the wrong color.
this is a little, I've added a little bit of cadmium lemon into this because these are catching more of the light. Now with a smaller brush, we add a dark little kind of pinpoint in the center of these. That makes a, just a cool little center in these. That's one of the things I loved about these flowers was just the neat, the neat center. In them. I forgot to put my yellow in this one, so I'll just do it here. Oops, gotten it too thick. Please visit my blog. The link is in the description below. It's also on the, the address is on the final frame of the video. In the blog, I show the entire step-by-step -step process of this painting. So if you want to see how it looks when it's finished, just go to my blog. So, there we go. There are our African daisies. I need to add a few little stems in here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you following my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos and blog with your artist friends or any of your friends. They don't have to be artists. But you have a wonderful, wonderful day and thank you very, very much.